All right, Bill, so what do you want to talk about? The first time you went surfing, your fascination with the water, or the worst time, the worst experience in the ocean? Dude, the worst experience in the ocean I've probably had is like, there's, there's two things I can think of that are just horrible. One is super brief and really intense, and it just saw what you would think. And then the other is like just all really, really, really long, and it didn't feel all that bad. And then, but it turned out to be actually fairly serious. So one, we're diving in Hawaii, and I was about to leave, and so it wasn't really up the tune or anything, and I was just kind of like in a support role. I was just doing what's called like standby diving. So standby diving is great. You just kind of sit there and tell stories and they need you to go in and go like grab someone or rescue someone or grab a piece of equipment. You kind of throw on a tank real quick and you go down and you go get it. So these guys, you know, came in in the uh, STV, which is this little submersible and they, you know, their seals driving it and they dropped off what's called like uh, ordnance. So they dropped off, you know, like a modified mine to go underneath the ship. But we obviously are not in the habit of going on a ships because you can get sucked into the suction and there's danger and there's so you just don't do it so often what we'll do is like deep mission ships or old barges you know the bottom of the ship at the bottom of the ship kind of so we had this really old barge and they went and put an ordinance on it and then the stv drove off and they're like hey you know really quick hop down there and go grab that and i was like okay and i didn't think of anything of it and i you know it's not that i wasn't hair it's like i go and i have this big flashlight and i'm all alone but which is really rare as a diver but i had what's called like a tether lot so i hooked up to the the boat so i could like you know kind of like it's somewhat like you know non-verbally communicate with us I, no i was like less than 10 feet oh okay yeah it's just like not at all right but kind of an experienced divers learn like yeah depth is a safety concern but just the mere fact that you're underwater at all that's where the danger lies you know, everything else increases, but there's always danger. Two feet, three feet, you know, 30 feet. There's danger, right? So I get underneath there and the grill underneath the barge is like six, seven feet. So the moment I get underneath this barge, it's totally dark. And like this area, this side of uh, Oahu is a little bit famous for having sharks. So what happened is, is I get down there and I'm like, dude, I can't see anything, you know? Usually you can see like a little bit at night, right? You can see anything at all. So I turn on the light, which is fairly like bright light, but the, the light made it worse. Oh, like fog. It was just like, made it so bright that I could only see like three inches in front of me. There was a little bit of like disturbance from like when they came in and put the ordinance on the bottom. I turned the light off, but then my eyes weren't adjusted. And I couldn't really like leave where I was because I had to kind of like, follow what the servants they had so i just had to stay there and think about sharks for like two or three minutes until my eyes adjusted and i just was not comfortable kind of he was just totally he was like claustrophobic oh which i've never been i was yeah. definitely thinking about sharks it's anything at all the growth was really really creepy right sure. like it extended past my knees it was really bad uh-huh and then I couldn't really swim and play my lap jacket a little bit, which like kind of put me up against the bottom of the uh, barge. And I had to like walk across the bottom with my hands, kind of like in a reverse handstand, right? If you could think about it. Huh. And I kind of had to follow like this little mini disturbance that they left when they put the ordinance in there. And then I just really, really slowly went in there, went in there, went in there. It was just so, such a bad scene that I actually took off my standby diver line attached it to the ordinance and just uh follow the line back to the boat oh wow. which is a little bit of like a no-no you know but i'm like all right as long as i have my hand on it we're good to go um so you you felt caught, you had this so the barge was above you so so a bar like and you had stuff all around you so it felt like you were in a box or something. yeah it was just like yeah and it just kind of like it it's like it swings really lazy so it kind of like just stays on you and you're like whoa uh oh yeah yeah it's, that would be, it's like a super out. creepy feeling yeah and i remember like having like a little like compass that was like barely lit and i remember taking like a mini little like compass berry to kind of like walk myself out and i didn't need it because i didn't lose sight of the line but yeah i, I came out you know i was saying that i'm a good guy to have on the standby diver boat which could get boring and monotonous after a while because you know I tried to stay animated and tell stories, but I came back and I was just like quiet and done. And like all the guys are like, 
dude, what's up with you? I'm like, dude, I did not like that dive. That was not good down there. And, uh, you know, it was over in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that was a fairly intense day. Yeah. And that could happen to anyone. Right? It could happen to anyone. But the it's, thing was, is that it came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. And I, had I known about the growth, or known I was kind of doing it, it would have been a different situation, you know? But yeah, it was, it was cool. Well, like, the time I spent in the ocean, the more I learned it's a lot is in your head. Oh, right? A lot of the yeah. unknown, like, you don't know what's down there, and then your mind starts playing games. Did you guys do any training, uh, mental training? For or... that? I mean, I, you know, it's kind of like one of those things like, hey, you've got to take a math test. You know, you should really think about calming yourself down and, you know, thinking like positively and, and just, you know, have good positive thoughts and eat well before the test. And you can do all that, and that's good for you. Or you could also spend another hour studying the math. Maybe you're better. You know what I mean? So there's like a there's like one of one and one of the other. You know. And so uh, I mean, I think SEAL definitely take like that, that different approach. It's like you can think positively about holding your breath underwater, or you can run and work out and swim a lot and run miles and work out more, swim a lot and run wind sprints and become really really healthy Just and be active. And your natural ability to hold breath will improve your manifest. But maybe if you work on the mental, you can improve it a little bit more. But the other one has far reaching effects on the positivity and performance of your entire life and your breath hold. I think because it's more tangible. It's more tangible. You can put your arms around, you can put your hand around. It. And there's yeah. probably a lot of people not admitting, like, yeah, certain things like that happen. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, you know, seals are. You know, I would say somewhat, you know, traditional in their values, not their values, but like in their training customs, you know, it's like, hey, you know, we're going to go for a run. Okay, well, I'm just going to sit here and think about the world and just relax for a minute. It's like, <laughs> no, you're going to get on your ass. You're going to go for a run with us right now. So, you know, there's this guy. All right. So that, yeah, well, that's cool. That's a good story.